So this is joint work with uh, Sazadur Rahman from University of Arizona and Agnes Kiss and Michael Bacchus from CISPA. Um, I assume that many of you use scripting languages like Python or Ruby. And honestly, a lot of the development is just popping up uh, packages like this. Uh, here, for example, maybe for preparing the, the paper for this conference, you used Seaborn, which is a popular package for visualizing data in Python. And when you issue this command, there's a package coming and more packages and more and more. So there's a lot of dependencies coming uh, uh, when you, you download one of them. And the, the security community looked at problems uh, related to these uh, dependencies, like injection problems or redos vulnerabilities and so on. But one thing that was previously neglected is the amount of C and C++ code that is present in these uh, dependencies. And it, uh, this, this code can be invoked mostly with a mechanism called native extensions that enable the, the use of this low-level code into the scripting language itself. So why do people do this? Mostly for high-performance code. For example, packages like Pandas use a lot of C++ code. But also for exposing hardware capabilities like the Bluetooth API or um, the serial interface. Or for mature code like SQLite and OpenSSL to make this code available to the scripting language. And how does a native extension work? At install time, usually the C++ code is compiled and it offers support both for C and C++ via specialized uh, bindings that you need to import in the C code. Um, it exposes this low-level uh, script code via uh, specialized interfaces in the, uh, in the scripting language, and it often runs in the same process. So that is w one thing that can go wrong, that a lot of these low-level problems we know um, in C and C++ code, like uh, the ones caused by manual man uh, memory management, will just leak into the, the scripting language, and developers don't expect that to happen. Um, but more importantly, you can also misuse these native APIs interfaces that are offered into the C and C++ code, and this could lead to all kinds of problems, as I'll show you in a minute. So for example, assume you want to use a, a package from um, NPM here, so this is JavaScript code. Um, let's assume you want to use a, a package that will pad your string with some, some uh, values. You probably know about this left pad incident where seven lines of code took down half of the internet or something. So let's assume now you want to do this efficiently and you use a native extension for that. Um, you use a package like native pad here. Uh, there's a bit of JavaScript code that will just translate values from the client application to the native extension. It will load the native extension with, with this require uh, instruction here. And this is the code of the extension. It looks complicated, but it's not. Basically what, what it does is to use this highlighted APIs to retrieve the values coming from the scripting language to, uh, source, to allocate space for new values. And the only thing that this uh, extension is actually doing is that string has operation uh, towards the bottom of the function. But in the documentation of this API, it's written that you need to uh, check the result uh, of each of these APIs provided by Node.js. Um, here with an assert instruction. But we see that developers often forget to, to check these return values, and that could lead to, uh, to security problems. So for example, now if you pass the value foo into the native extensions, it gets propagated via this uh, code in the third-party dependency to, to the native extension. It gets parsed via this napy get value string. Uh, it gets concatenated with the pad value, and finally gets uh, returned into the, the client application. But interestingly, if you put, for example, the, the null terminator into the string, this will confuse the string cat operation and the, the C code, which will result in some of the information being lost along the way. If you pass uh, invalid arguments, so you don't pass a string, but rather a Boolean, this will result to uninitialized bytes leaking into the, py into the JavaScript code here, or if you pass complex objects with the two-string property uh, having a number, this will crash the entire Node.js process, which can lead to all kinds of availability problems. So in the first part of the paper, we looked at uh, three different languages, at, uh, Python, Ruby, and JavaScript, like the Node.js runtime. Uh, we look how they implement native extensions and try to compare the API of these three languages. So first we saw uh, 
as a potential problem, the way this uh, native extension APIs handle uh, runtime errors and exceptions, and we see that all of them allow such exceptions to crash the process. So this we, we deem as an important problem here that uh, developers need to pay attention to. For arguments, we see that Python and Ruby don't allow invalid arguments, but Node.js allows you to continue, as we saw before, with an invalid argument that will lead to crashes, uninitialized values, or even more serious problems. For return values, we see that uh, in Python and Ruby, you can, again, uh, do all kinds of things by not returning on certain branches or returning void values that then you try to read in the scripting language. This, again, will lead to crashes. We also saw that there are important memory-related uh, issues, like there are cross-language pointers in Python that you need to manually manage. And because of these two sides of, of the uh, language boundary where the pointers are used, this could, again, lead to, to problems. Um, we also see that all these cross-language uh, calls are synchronously, and this we saw before that this, this could lead to availability problems. And, all of the, the APIs we consider, they all have different flags when compiling the native extension, and uh, because of this, they have different support for defending against these traditional problems like buffer overflows or, or use after free. But what stands out here, hopefully, is that Node.js is the most permissive uh, of these three runtimes, and, and that um, this, this could cause confusion in, into developers' mind and lead to all kinds of vulnerabilities. So this was the, our speculation at the end of this empirical study, and we propose a um, two-step methodology to see if these problems, these subtle problems with native extensions could lead to problems in web, web applications end-to-end. Um, -end. And for that, we do a first phase, in the first phase, the uh, package analysis. It is mostly intra-procedural. We look at the function, the two functions around the language boundary, the C++ one and the, the JavaScript one in this case. We map them using the definition of the native extension, and we flag a, um, a set of possible problems. We then manually inspect them and report them to developers and only consider those that are confirmed by the, by the maintainers of the package. In the second phase, where we do uh, an application analysis, we do here an interprocedural static analysis where we look for um, remote calls to web applications that could end up in these problematic packages with native extensions. We then look at those and confirm a set of exploitable Node.js applications. An interesting data structure we propose for the package analysis is this cross-language data flow graph that has uh, nodes and edges from the JavaScript code, but also from C and C++ code, all in a single data structure. And when we perform Vulnerability detection, we look for flows to particular sinks. These are usually located in the C, C++ code. And we look for sanitizers that could be either in the C code or in the uh, JavaScript code. We then run this um, package analysis on 7,600 packages from the NPM ecosystem. And we manually inspect each of the alerts. What we find is that a lot of, a lot of these packages do type checks Oh, I forgot to say this. We, we mostly look at type checks at this, uh, this point with our methodology. And we see that a lot of the packages do type checks in the C++ code, but there are some, the ones in blue here, that also do type checks in JavaScript. So this justifies why we need this cross-language analysis. Otherwise, the blue alerts would just be false positives. We have a few false positives. These are caused by the lack of interprocedural analysis in this phase. Um, Interestingly, we have these um, orange, uh, orange entries here, which are basically uh, alerts which we couldn't verify. We couldn't install the corresponding package, and we couldn't um, test whether this is a problem or not. Because remember that, that all the output of our analysis are vulnerabilities with real POCs that we can report to, to maintainers. So, the orange bar here, we, we just couldn't, we didn't have the hardware or the software requirements for uh, testing these packages. But we still found some exploitable uh, packages, which we then went and reported to the maintainers. We show an actual code that, that could lead to crashes or uninitialized values. Um, and most of them were quite supportive. They said, oh, this, this, this is very interesting. We didn't expect this. This is caused by the API. And, they either fixed it and issued the CVE, as you see here uh, on the slides, or some of them 
decided not to do so. But but the majority of them, I would say, um, they they were uh, very very responsive. And I'll show you how an end to end um, uh, an end to end problem we identified looks like. So here's the SQLite three package that we we discovered as having um, a problem with the native extension. Whenever you you pass into this package a complex object that has the two string property set to a value, this will immediately crash the Node.js process. And this is problematic for web applications because if you set, send repeatedly such uh, requests, the, the web application would repeatedly crash and no users could, could be served any valid um, requests. And we found web applications that look like this, that take a post uh, request, that take the the content of a post request uh, retrieves values from this post request and forward them to the SQLite uh, database. And of course, we can send post requests to, to such applications and repeatedly crash them. So to conclude, what I've shown you uh, today is that there are native extensions are a relatively popular mechanism in the scripting languages that causes all kinds of subtle security vulnerabilities there are important differences across the scripting languages, and Node.js seems to be the most um, permissive um, language into this space, allowing the misuse of native extensions. And we propose this two-phase methodology that finds end-to-end uh, -end vulnerabilities in web applications that we can uh, trigger remotely. Yeah, and we found quite some vulnerabilities and some of them uh, affecting web applications. Thank you very much. I would be happy to take questions. Thank you.